Let's talk about the hybridoma technology animation in this video. What is hybridoma technology or hybridization technique? It's a technique used to produce antibody producing hybrid cells. These hybrid cells can produce by fusing the genetic material of a B lymphocyte with a tumor cell. Now normally we gather those B lymphocytes from mouse. We infect the mouse with a particular antigen against which we are going to produce an antibody. And remember, in this case, the antibody we are talking about are much more specific against the antigen that we used to inject in the mouse's body in the very first time. Now, presence of the B lymphocyte genetic material helps in the antibody production, whereas the capacity to divide indefinitely in the culture due to the presence of the tumor cells. So, we'll take the help of the B lymphocytes function as well as the help of tumor cells function and we punch them together and we make a hybrid cell which is known as hybridoma and using that hybrid cell we can produce many number of our desired antibody against that specific antigen that we use at the beginning to infect the mouse. So, let's begin to understand the steps of hybridoma technology. Step one is making an individual cell cultures. It's individual cell culture for B cells, B lymphocytes, as well as the individual culture of tumor cells. Now, first, the mouse is immunized by giving antigen injection against which the monoclonal antibody have to be produced, along with an adjuvant, which are uh, protein molecules, a big molecular weight molecule that can be inserted. This is followed by the booster dose of that same antigen and after 72 hours of immunization, the spleen is collected from the mouse and a free cell suspension medium of the spleen is produced. So, we have a cell suspension medium of the spleen after 72 hours of infecting the mouse with antigen. All these processes are applied for extraction of plasma cells from the spleen. And then we maintain the plasma cells in the cell culture media for 16 to 24 hours before the fusion event. It should be ensured that the cells are in the early phase of the growth at the time of fusion. The myeloma cells are selected based on the criteria like these cells themselves should not produce antibodies and also they should contain genetic markers such as HGPRT, hypoxanthine, guanine, phosporibosyl transferase enzyme. This genetic marker help in easy selection of resulting hybrid cells. So, we also need to culture the myeloma cell line. And remember, I told you the myeloma cell must contain HGPRT. Okay? This genetic marker must be present in these myeloma cells because it will be needed for the selection process next. At the time of fusion, both myeloma and spleen cells are counted and then mixed in appropriate ratio. Normally, the ratio varies, but still we can take the varies ratio of spleen to tumor cell, 5 is to 1 to 2 is to 1. Following the mixing, the cells are centrifuged into a loose pellet and the supernatant is removed and the pellet is mixed. So, normally after centrifugation, the pellet here, we take the pellet and the pellet is mixed with 1 milliliter of polyethylene glycol or PEG for 3 minutes. In doing so, the pellet will be broken up into uniform small groups. Following the fusion, we dilute the cells in serum, free medium slowly to reduce the osmotic disruption of the fused cell. Then the centrifuge the cells again and then the then we resuspend these cells into a media known as hat media, hypoxanthine aminopectrine thymidine medium or hat medium. Then the hat medium containing the fused cells are allowed to incubate in a carbon dioxide incubator for three to four days, where we desire those hybridoma cells to grow. Now, what exactly happens in that hat medium? Let's talk about that. Remember, in that hat medium, we have multiple type of cells. We have uh, the B cell, we have the myeloma cell, and we have the hybridoma cells. Okay. So, we need to do proper screening 
and then only we can expand the type of hybridoma cell of our choice and we can produce the type of monoclonal antibody that we want to produce. So let's talk about the third step which is known as the screening. Okay. So what happens here? Remember we have two different type of cell. The spleen cells or B cells, B lymphocytes, they are HGPRT plus antibody producing cells. The myeloma cells are HGPRT minus in this case. Only the hybridoma cells have got the ability to divide and proliferation on the HAT medium. Why? Because the genome from the B lymphocyte, so if you mix them together, the genome from the B lymphocyte makes uh, the HGPRT because they are HGPRT positive. Okay? And the genome from the myeloma cells are HGPRT negative. Thus, only the hybridoma cells or fused cells are selective to grow. Now, think about this myeloma cells which are either fused or unfused myeloma cells. They will die because they are HGPRT minus so they cannot survive in the hat medium. On the other hand, the B cells cannot grow whether they are unfused or fused B cells, B lymphocytes, they cannot grow because normally they cannot grow in the hat medium. Although they have a GPRT, but they cannot grow in the hat medium. So, their growth is also halted. They also die. Only the cell survive is the hybridoma because it contains both. It contains the genome from the B lymphocyte that makes them a GPRT positive and also it contains the genome from myeloma cells that can divide indefinitely in the hat medium. Thus, the hybridoma cells are selected and we want the hybridoma cells to grow and particularly we want those hybridoma cells to grow who can produce the antibody perfectly. So, the step 4 is the identification and isolation of hybridoma cells and what we simply do is we screen those hybridoma cells that can produce our target monoclonal antibodies okay and we generally do the screening with the help of ELISA okay enzyme link immunosorbent assay and ELISA we can select the hybridoma cells that can produce the antibody because we have a mixture of hybridoma some of them able to produce antibody some of them fail to produce antibody now once we see with ELISA we only select those cells those hybridoma cells which can produce antibody and then we select them we allow them to make more and more monoclonal antibodies and we simply call it the expansion of the monoclonal antibody and we can do the expansion we can inject this antibody inside uh, other mouse and we want them to grow there. So, this is how we can produce more and more and more copy of antibody in vitro in the petri plate using hybridoma technology or hybridization technique that is available as a beautiful one of a kind bi biotechnology tool. So, that is all about how exactly we use hybridoma technology to produce monoclonal antibody and remember this monoclonal antibody are specific against a specific type of antigenic determinant. So, they cannot bind to multiple antigen at once. One monoclonal antibody can only bind to one specific antigen. Similarly, we can produce as many as type of monoclonal antibody we need against different antigenic site of a virus. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like this. Thank you. Bye.